Tutankhamun's death mask is one of the most iconic artifacts ever recovered from Egypt, or probably the world. It is an awe-inspiring sight. However, what many people who visit Egypt to see these ancient relics are unaware of, a rather curious collection of artifacts found alongside the exquisitely casted mask of gold. Resting with Tut for all those centuries was more than likely a favorite pastime of the pharaoh, throwing his collection of Australian boomerangs complete with aboriginal artworks. Aboriginals were a civilization who also partook in the ceremony of mummification. Not only did they practice the techniques which made ancient Egypt famous, the two apparently separate cultures' methods were near identical to each other. The processes were so similar, in fact, Salento, upon examining an aboriginal mummified child, concluded that the incisions and method of embalming were the exact same as those employed in Egypt between the 21st and 23rd dynasties. And he is not alone in his conclusion. In 1911, Elliot Smith also became especially interested in the fact that the Australian aboriginals and the neighboring peoples had certain customs of mummification which were very similar, if not identical to that of ancient Egyptian methods. Due to this evidence, people began to postulate a pre-Columbian visit to the Australian continent. This is, however, before one became aware of the Gosford Glyphs. Located near Karyong, about 60 kilometers north of Sydney, the hieroglyphs are unique in their appearance. The engravings number well over 300, yet vandalization has occurred with newer frauds appearing since 1986. Yet the original glyph's authenticity is unquestionable. The original image includes an engraved Ankh, an essential accompaniment to Thoth, placed alongside an ibis footprint and the River of Life, the Egyptian crypt dedicated to the memory of the son of a pharaoh, said to be constructed close to the Duramelon rock platform. The remarkable hieroglyphs thus strongly insinuate the presence of Egyptian ruins within Australia. Dated to the beginning of the 16th century some 5,000 years ago means these glyphs should form a pivotal and historic epitaph to an Australian history very few suspected. The hieroglyphs also contain unique and strange UFO symbols, with a figure seated at a control panel, a figure that could represent Pharaoh Akhenaten or something far more profound. It seems that not only do we have strong connections linking Egypt to Australia, but to many sites dotting the world. Tobacco and other things found in and around ancient Egypt has also provided compounding evidence to suggest a vast and highly sophisticated method of traversing the Earth's oceans thousands of years prior to the creation of the United States of America. We will endeavor to explore further evidence of the ancient Egyptian culture being present in Australia in an attempt to unearth further hidden details that may help us shed more light on our very distant past. As always, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, take care. We recently covered the ancient Egyptian Australian connection, sharing the intriguing yet quietly cataloged, thus little known, or researched artifacts which have undoubtedly displayed a connection with these two very distant lands over 5,000 years ago. Boomerangs in Egypt, and the hieroglyphs in Gosford, and alas, the destroyed Gimpy Pyramid which was bulldozed into the sea. However, the Gosford glyphs speak of another great monument, a pyramid built for an extremely wealthy pharaoh. Dr. Von Senth an amateur aging independent archaeologist, has concluded after several decades of extensive research regarding these curious connections that Australia was actually discovered in the Third Dynasty about 5,000 years ago, landing on the Cape York Peninsula and subsequently moving south. Much of his own work collaborating prior research of Queensland Egyptologist Ray Johnson who claimed to have done a transcription of the Gosford hieroglyphs. According to Mr. Johnson, who died in 2004, the carvings mark the burial site and accompanying pyramid of Lord Nefertiru, who was a member of the Egyptian royal family. It tells of him having died in the area while leading an expedition with his brother Neferdijizib somewhere along the Australian east coast. During our exploration into said research, we became aware of the translation of these 300 or so glyphs inscribed upon the ancient Gosford rocks, an inscription explaining the location of these places. Granite is a particularly hard and heavy material, often picked as the core stone of choice for the weight-bearing structures within these enormous buildings. 
there is indeed a granite pyramid in Queensland. And surprisingly, it is even known as a pyramid. Known as the Welsh Pyramid, it has long been defined as a natural independent granite peak, with little to no exploratory research, ever to the contrary. And this peak even appears to be the shape of a pyramidal structure. In the 1870s, the mountain was named after the Queensland Government Minister of Works, William Henry Walsh. And every year in August, this mountain is the focus of a race, charmingly called the Great Pyramid Race. It involves runners completing a 12-kilometer course from the middle of nearby Gordon Vale to the summit of Walsh's Pyramid. No explorations of this possible pyramid have ever been allowed. This, regardless of the quietly kept fact that Egyptian hieroglyphic information within Australia actually confessing to the existence of such a possible structure and within the specific vicinity. Just like the Bosnian site, this mainly granite structure is conveniently hidden beneath several feet of earth, seemingly aiding in the plausible deniability of such an ancient structure actually existing beneath. Known as the backbone of Rurunuran National Park, we would welcome exploration and excavations of this uniquely shaped mountain within Australia, especially after becoming aware of such compelling ancient information. Is Walsh's pyramid a man-made pyramid? Is it the structure we seek? If this is the case, why is it being suppressed and hidden like so many other sites around the world and possibly even further afield? Hey guys, so I'm sure you're aware of the Nazca Lines of Peru, the enormous drawings found upon the land created using a vast array of subjects. What is especially interesting regarding these ancient lines found all over the world is that to truly appreciate the images, you would have to view them from space. Some of the drawings are even waving, leading many to wonder over the years regarding their original purpose. The largest lines can be found in Bolivia. Known as the Sajama Lines, they were clearly constructed by an intelligent force. Many theories regarding the original function of the lines have been put forward over the years, though to this day, the actual purpose remains a mystery. Covering an area of approximately 22,525 square kilometers, they're truly massive. Each individual line is around 3 meters wide, with the longest measuring over 20 kilometers in length. However, amazingly, the largest known drawing of one subject is actually a modern creation, and it is a drawing of a man. Called the Mari Man, or Stuart's Giant, it was discovered by Trek Smith on the 26th of June, 1998. A charter pilot flying between Mari and Cooper Petty in the vast remote bushlands of southern Australia. Created deep in the outback, far away from civilization, the creators of this gigantic drawing remain a complete mystery. 4.2 kilometers tall and with a perimeter of over 28 kilometers, due to the massive undertaking these lines would have been, the huge resources they demanded on the land and in the air, the fact that no one saw it being created or additionally reported it, its creation will remain extremely perplexing. To create such an image, a fleet of vehicles would have been required, a system of radio communication and a team of individuals to create it. All this completed within a dry, remote, unforgiving corner of the Australian outback, without telling anyone that it's there? The Mari Man depicts an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or stick. It lies on a plateau at Finnis Springs, 60 kilometers west of the township of Mari in central South Australia. Was the Mari Man made by extraterrestrial visitors to our planet as a form of orbital indication to what inhabits the planet? Although the mystery of the Mari Man may be a new one, it's just as confusing as ancient lines. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, Take care. In 1994, Klaus Schmidt of the German Archaeological Institute began excavations at a Neolithic site located within modern-day southern Turkey. Noted for its immense size and its undeniably incredible antiquity, Gobekli Tepe is an ancient structure made up of at least 200 T-shaped stone pillars some of which measuring an impressive 6 meters in height and weighing a respectable 22 tons in weight.
However, although it has been admitted as one of the oldest sites on Earth, undeniably contradicting modern-day paradigms in regards to the claimed dates of modern ancestral migration routes, the pillars are also covered with mysterious symbology, some of which has since been identified in an ancient group who not only share these same symbols within their culture, even to this day, but have since been hypothesized by a number of individual researchers as the possible culprits for the construction of the site itself, dating back to what we feel is a now lost antiquity. Gobekli Tepe has been academically dated as being at least 12,000 years old, yet any logical explanation as to who or indeed how the site was constructed remains conveniently elusive. Yet regardless of the unanswered questions that many people are still left with, even after academia's explanation, intrigue has seemingly increased since its exception into known site of Earth's antiquities. Modern studies have discovered compelling links between the symbolism of the site and that of the symbolism still used within Aboriginal groups of Australia. Famous for their ancient ancestry and their claims of a lost time before history books began, which they now call dream time, it seems that further to these curious beliefs, they also share an ancient language of symbols with the site, whose meanings has unfortunately been lost to the chasm of time. Yet regardless of their lost meaning, the similarities between this mysterious language and that of the symbology carved upon what is claimed as the oldest site on Earth is undeniable. This realization has enabled a number of individual researchers to conclude that there was once a now lost civilization who they now believe and claim was once made up of aboriginals, who they also claim seemingly survived upon the continent of Australia, but were mysteriously wiped out upon the many other continents of the earth. Furthermore, it seems that there are a number of areas upon the site that mainstream sources would prefer stay covered up. The Turkish government recently visited the site and committed an act of criminal vandalism, filling a number of intriguing voids at the site with cement. The question is, what were they so desperate to conceal? Could there possibly be compounding evidence at the site, supporting the new and current hypothesis of the site once having aboriginal origins? It's undoubtedly a site which deserves more protection, one which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Recently, we covered the unusual connections which have been made between the ancient Egyptian civilization and the Australian continent. The strange, yet not often discussed discoveries, such as that of Tutankhamun's vast boomerang collection, the vast and extremely controversial hieroglyphs discovered near Queensland, known as the Gosford Glyphs, locally known for centuries as the Woiwoi Hieroglyphs, which clearly depict the burial ceremony of an Egyptian god, the cross-Pacific voyage undertaken, and a pyramid supposedly constructed upon the continent. There is, however, so much more. At Tin Can Bay, the chosen location of this once existing ancient Egyptian pyramid, for some reason, over the last century, a massive cover-up operation has ensued. The pyramid subsequently bulldozed onto a barge and the stone dumped off Fraser Island. The 10 to 12 men who were involved in this lengthy, destructive, and highly criminal task all signed secrecy agreements with the Australian government, agreeing to never tell anyone of their operation to rob Australians and the rest of the world of a truly historical understanding. Many people have researched this destroyed, controversial structure and through extensive excavations and fact-finding exhibitions, have fortunately confirmed its past existence beyond any doubt. Although other ancient ruins have been found in the area, all have been extensively researched by individuals funded by organizations who would prefer that they arrive at certain conclusions, thus they may have largely been put down as being built in the last 200 years in many academic papers. However, many independent investigators have spent over 20 years attempting to decipher the pyramid's mysterious existence. The pyramid was noted as existing by the very first white explorers to the area. The aboriginal population had been aware of the structure for millennia. During numerous excavations of the Tin Can Bay area, several large stone statues were recovered. It is difficult to deny an attempted suppression of the pyramid's discovery, 
When you are made aware of the fact that out of the five animal statues uncovered at the site, only one survives. Thanks to being buried within archives at the time of the other statues' disappearances, a creature not native to Australia, explaining the presence of ancient Egyptian-style mummification rites once practiced among the Torres Strait Islanders and Cape York Aboriginal tribes, as well as associated rites and beliefs, have also paralleled the same teachings of the religion of Osiris. Although many scholars, funded for many different conclusions, have all attempted to discredit the pyramid as a modern knockoff, this is in staunch rejection of the overwhelming and very real evidence in the form of cultural artifacts, which paint a very different picture of events, events which occurred within antiquity. You have to wonder why a story based entirely in fiction is passed off as the truth. One of our favorite set of artifacts defending a factual account of history have to be the scarab beetles, which, while certain authorities clearly attempt to keep the lid on Egyptian culture within Australia, cannot seem to get away from. These beautiful things just keep being unearthed, the first such artifact which managed to make it to popular attention before disappearing forever was a specimen made of chert, dug up by a workman in 1976. The truth, it appears, is indeed out there. It is just a case of finding it.